Complete paperless solutions, giving you cutting edge technologies with real world experience and know-how. We'll take your organization to the next level of information management. Complete paperless solutions, the only solution. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Ask the Experts, Workflows. My name is Kimberly and I'm gonna be the moderator of our session today. First, let's start with a little housekeeping. If you have any questions, during or after the presentation, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel on the top right-hand side of your screen. I'll be monitoring this during the presentation and we'll allow time for questions at the end or we'll follow up with you later. And some of you are already taking advantage of that, so thank you for using the question box. Also, the presentation looks best in full screen mode. So you'll want to enable that by clicking on the full screen option. And finally, we are recording this and we'll post it to our website so that you may share it with your colleagues or view it again. We expect to have it posted by Friday and you'll get an email. Our presenters today are Tom Ziancina, CEO of Complete Paperless Solutions and Greg Heim, Vice President of Complete Paperless Solutions. Both of these gentlemen have decades of experience in envisioning, implementing, and installing LaserView solutions with an emphasis on enterprise, integrated, and customized utilization. Tom and Greg have a long, long history, and I'm sure you all know them, partnering with government agencies, helping them balance service excellence with efficient operations. Tom, we're gonna start with you. And as you can see, looking at the agenda, we're gonna dive right in. So please start when you're ready. Well, good morning, everyone. Really, really wanna thank you for attending this webinar. You know, uh, technology has changed pretty significantly over the years, and we're going to show you some great stuff and what you can do with LaserFish workflow and forms. I don't wanna take up a lot of time, talking, as you know, I can tell stories forever <laughs> about things before I turn it over to Greg, but just one last thought. The best thing LaserFish ever has done in the last, you know, 30 some odd years that it's been around is workflow and forms. And that's what Greg is going to talk about. And right now we're going to turn it over to Greg. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tom, and welcome everybody. Um, I just want to start with a couple of words, um, you know, and there's some craziness going on, of course, and, you know, in today's business environment, how do you provide better service and better product and better access? And how do you stay a step ahead um, in challenging times? How do you do more with less? Or even sometimes how do you even manage to um, maintain status quo? How do you do more with less? Less what? Uh, less money, less people, less resources. How do we maintain business as usual with less? Well, uh, we start by changing the way we submit, receive, collect, collaborate, approve, and distribute information. We start by changing the way we think. And my objective today is to change the way you think, and more specifically, the way you think about LaserFish Enterprise Content Management. Now, today, hopefully, is the first of many webinars we plan to provide to you, our LaserFish family, and our extended family members. Um, our intent moving through these webinars is to incite ideas and to promote best practices and principles to help you get more return on your investments. Now, uh, today's webinar, we're going to take a look at three main topics. We're going to look at records management, and we're going to look at intelligent redaction. We're going to look at uh, contract management and reporting uh, from beginning to end. And within these process studies, um, hopefully you'll see or hear the common thread that I've got running through with this, and that is the use and control of your metadata. And LaserFish gives us all the tools we need 
I think the only thing we need to do is expand our imaginations. Now, well, we also want to we also want to get rid of our what's the word I'm looking for? Not inhibitions. We want to just start thinking that we have no limitations when it comes to our business processes. I mean, where there's a will, there's a better way to get the job done. So, I know. Okay. All right. So Kimberly says I'm talking too much. So let me dive into the demo. So let me start with this. Um, I want to paint a picture for you. And what we want to do is we want to use technology that most of you probably already have in your office. You have these high-speed uh, copier machines. You know, they're nowadays, I mean, you know, they haven't always been, but nowadays they're high-speed, they're high-quality. And these things can write to a network drive. Now, imagine yourself walking up to the copier machine and putting in a huge stack of documents. And by the time you get back to your desk, you open up Laserfish, and inside of your quality assurance area, your document that you just scanned is sitting here waiting for you. Now, in complete paperless solutions world, we really like to focus on procedure, best practices. Um, there are certain uh, entities in Laserfish that do wonderful, fabulous things, but nothing is ever 100% accurate. So we have to put checks and balances in place. And we also want to simplify the end user experience. Now, I've got this document on the screen, and I'm going to go ahead and just put some minor indexing in. I'd like you to take note that this was routed automatically to the administrative department. Um, when it was scanned, it picked it up off the scan and removed a slip sheet. Um, you'll notice that there is a whole list of departments here. And as I go through this list of departments, you'll notice that as I hit the division list, it only gives me the divisions for administration. And then as I choose a record series, you'll notice it only gives me the record series for that division. This particular document is a certificate of insurance, and I know from my council's retention schedule that I brought in that this belongs to legal and legislative. And underneath that, it's going to display me only the document types that are relative, like the proof of insurance. I'm simply going to check the record series that I want. You'll notice that the records retention information automatically came in with the descriptor, the retention, which is expired plus five years, which is also an event. We could talk about that later on. And then, of course, the government code. The only thing the end user has to put in is the date of the document, which is in the top right, 619, 2020. I'm just going to say okay to that. Now, workflow. Recognize that metadata that we just changed and took this document and filed it. Okay? Where did it go? Well, currently we are in our quality assurance area. That's what the white folders represent. Our regular city archive is in the blue area. And if you remember, it belonged to administration. It belonged to legal legislative. And it was a proof of insurance. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that. There's a date in there, 2020. And, well, here. Now, this is interesting. Here we have all these folders, but we have our proof of insurance that's kind of sitting out here in Never Neverland. Now, that's going to bring me to one of my best practices points. Okay? Uniformity and consistency in filing surfaces inconsistencies in your filing. You can clearly see that something's not right with this. It's like Sesame Street. Something doesn't belong. This proof of insurance looks like it should be inside of a vendor or customer folder. So maybe I forgot to put that in. We'll have to go back and look at that. But the thing is, that if I had a bunch of junk in my repository, I would have never even noticed that this was misfiled. So the best practice is, is this. If you keep a clean house and something is out of place, you notice it quickly and you clean it up. So let's clean this up. Okay? I'm going to open this document and I know that the vendor is missing. So let me just put the vendor name in. 
Oh, there's vendor number. Where's vendor name? There it is. Now, who are we? Um, complete paperless solutions. Well, apparently my keyboard doesn't want to work right. Hang on, let me get to the C's. And you notice one of the things that we have going on here is we have a drop down list, right? Um, we talk about consistency, we talk about uniformity, we talk about that housekeeping. The other thing we want to talk about is taking away uh, human error. Or no, let me not phrase it as human error. Let me rephrase it as simplifying the end user decision making process. It's huge. If we can auto populate and if we can auto name things, well, now we have consistency, we have uniformity, and our filing will end up immaculate if we let workflow file our documents. And again, file our documents on what? Based on what? Well, based on the metadata. That's what we're seeing on the right hand side of this screen. And what is metadata? It's a set of data that describes and gives information about other data, or in this case, your document that's sitting in there, okay? Now, let me close that and save it. Now, what happens to our document? Well, again, we got a little refresh going on our screen, and you'll notice that that document has now disappeared. You'll also notice that there's a complete paperless solutions folder here. Oh, and there's our proof of insurance. But you know what? In housekeeping, it's still, what 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 belongs in these empty brackets? Well, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. You and I know that proof of insurance is part of a contract management process. So this particular document, since it's an accord, is special. So we have a special set of metadata for that, and it's called contract management. Now, I'd like you to take note that even though I changed the template, all of my data that was there before still exists because all of the record filing from the retention schedule is still part of the document's life cycle. So we have to maintain that to, to stay compliant. Now, since this document is just simply called a proof of insurance, we, in order to use it for reporting and to use it for contract management, want to index it just a little bit further. We want to add just a little bit more metadata. We want to add these separate coverages. Right, So that's what I'm going to do. And you notice that when I changed to this contract management template, it gave me this grouped window. And inside this group window, it has a subtype. And the system automatically recognized that since this was a certificate of liability insurance or an accord, it gives me the coverages to choose from. Now, my first coverage is commercial general liability. The date for this is June. 23rd, 2020, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to copy that control C to copy and control V to paste. And I'm going to make this 2021. Okay. So there's number one, I'm going to hit this little plus sign and add some more metadata. I'm going to add automobile liability. I'm going to do my cut and paste again, get that date in there. And I want to do one more, you guys, just one more. All right, one last one. Let's do that workman's comp. And we're going to put in this one, same date, because they all seem to have the same month, day, and year. Now, let's close that and let's watch what happens to our proof of insurance. One, you notice that it changed color. It now has a different template associated with it. Two. Now something finally got put between the parentheses, 2021. And that came from our metadata for our insurance coverage, okay? But let me show you one more quick step further. 2021, somebody requested that we put in this feature so that at a glance, again, when we keep a clean house, at a glance, we don't have to open things. We can save time by looking at a name and that name has meaning. And in this case, I'm gonna just simply change one of these months to expire. So the expiration date for this, I'm going to change this to 08, 2020. And just for general purpose, I'm going to change this workman's comp 
to 2022. Now, our name's going to change as well. Workflow picked up the change in the metadata, and it renamed it. So now at a glance, I know that I have multiple coverages in there, one that expires in 2020, and at a glance, I know that one expires in 2022. So again, going back to what I said about our imaginations, this came from the imagination of one of our customers and said, hey, this would be a great feature to add. And all of our business processes, all of the things that we do are tailored to the customer's needs. That's the other beautiful thing about LaserFish is that out of the box, it gives us the toolkits. It gives us the ability to have a simple drag and drop workflow that allows me to build out business processes, whether it be with the LaserFish workflow or whether it be with LaserFish Forms process modeler. And I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. I want to show you one more thing with this metadata, and it's one of our main topics for our webinar, and it's the intelligent redaction. And again, this is a feature that was requested by a client. Now, this client had a public request, PRA, to see all of this government agency's bank reconciliations. Um, and as you know, there's sensitive information in those things, account numbers, right? Um, and we're talking five, 6,000 pages of bank reconciliation that this customer has got a cup full of black magic markers out and they're going through each page one at a time. Called us up and said, hey, can you help? And thank you, LaserFish, for giving us the feature functionality. We developed this business process. I'm not going to open this document just yet because it has sensitive account number information. But what I am going to do is I'm going to click on this auto redaction button that you see here up at the top of my screen. Okay. Now that is a business process that we designed and we put a button in our LaserFish application to initiate it. Now, since this document was requested for public consumption, you'll notice that it didn't go anywhere. Nothing really changed with it. This is sitting in a an area that needs to be quality assured and checked before it can be put out for public consumption. Workflow is doing those checks. After the redaction, everything is how it should be. And it sends me an email. And let me pull this email up for you because it just got into my inbox. And it says, attention, PRA document bank reconciliation was processed in public records finance. You can find it. And it found automatically 41 account numbers. And then I also have a link, excuse me, we also put a link in here um, to the public facing portal. So straight from the email, I'm able to go in and look at that PRA. Now it's up on the public portal for public consumption. And an email can also be sent directly to the requester. You'll notice that the account number for the city of Laserfish's account is blocked out on every page. Any variation of any account number. Okay. Now it automatically goes through these and blocks them wherever it finds a pattern. And we design it that way to be intelligent so that as we have new types of documents that comes in, we can actually develop other patterns and every other capture man, man, uh, methods that allow us to pick up other information. Now, let's take this redaction a step further. Let me close this up. I'm going to go back to this same bank reconciliation. And you probably didn't notice because I probably didn't go far enough down, but in our metadata, in our template fields, I have a field down here at the bottom called redact. What? Redact what? Well, um, again, I'm going to just pick a few keywords. I'm going to pick, it was the city of Laserfish, so I'm going to pick Laserfish. Um, I saw that it was attention to Tom. It was in Cena. I saw words like uh, tax. I saw words like bonds. Uh, I saw, oh, I'm 
sure I didn't see it, but I'm sure the total has to be in there. Um, let's do statements. And what was the other one? I saw portfolio. Portfolio. All right, so I'm simply going to put those in this field called redact. And this is a multi-value field. You'll notice that even though it's one field, I'm out, able to put multiple values in that one field. And again, this is a out-of-the-box feature of LaserFish. And I'm just going to say OK to this to save it. Now again, this document is filed somewhere else. What we're doing right now is just fulfilling the request for the PRA. Okay, And so with the 5,000 documents that we got, we did some benchmarks with this. And as it turned out, uh, we were able to redact 5,000 pages in less than 10 seconds. Okay, My email came in with uh, the redaction that I just did, just now 1123, and it redacted the word laserfish 18 times, Tom's and Cena nine times, tax, and you guys can read, portfolio account numbers. Still got the same amount of account numbers. And again, the same link that I can click on. And it takes me out again to the Laserfish public portal. And again, the public portal um, is a product called WebLink, and it's read-only. And now you notice my document has gone and redacted automatically on every page, every piece of metadata that I put in to the Laserfish template. This is huge. Thank you, Laserfish. All right. I'm going to move on. So we have one last part of our demonstration that I would like to show you. And then we're going to get to some questions and answers. Now, this one is a little bit longer, um, but not too bad. And what we're going to take a look at today is contract management. And this is going to start with submitting a request for a contract and end with reporting on the life cycle of said contract. Now, with that said, what you see on the screen right now is a process or a product called Laserfish Forms. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not. Um, it is part of the Laserfish suite in one way or another. So if you don't have it and you are interested, you might want to get with your reseller. I've got a whole list of forms that were created, and Laserfish comes with a whole library of forms that you can develop um, if you need assistance. Um, today, we're going to take a look at this new contract process. And so, let me paint another picture for you. I am a submitter. I'm an administrator, say, for example, that works uh, in a particular department. And part of my administrative duty is to take care of all the contract work for my director, okay? Um, and so I'm going to be the person that is going to request a contract through the contract management system, okay? Now, keep in mind that it's not a contract just yet. It's just a request. Also keep in mind that throughout this process, you can put as many checks and balances, as many approval processes as you want in place, um, as many approvers as you want. And again, just keep in mind that this is totally terrible out of the box. We're going to show you a shortened version of it today, so to speak. Okay. Now, back to this. You see a new contract request on the screen. You'll notice automatically picked up my name, automatically picked up my email. And it's telling me that it's going to put the date on here as soon as I submit it. Now, this is important when it comes to our electronic signature at the bottom of this, because I have authenticated, signed into the system as myself. My requesting department is required. It's got the little star there, and I'm in administration. My contract title, um, contract management implementation, priority. I'm going to make this mm, fairly high. I'm going to make this this pretty high for. And remember that all of this metadata that we're filling out, we're going to use this metadata throughout the entire process 
contract type. Got a whole list of them. We're going to do a general services agreement. Is this an amendment? No, we haven't done one of these yet. Does the external party have a drafted contract? No. Do they have a quote for us? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and associate that quote. They gave me a quote for professional services for two days. I'm going to go ahead and attach that. Now, this is going to be a short contract, and it's going to start on Monday the 31st. I'm going to do that cut and paste thing again here, you guys, and I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to end this. Um, I mean, you know what? For the reporting later on, I'm going to leave this at 2020, but I'm going to have this expire in September. And there's only 30 days, so I have to change that. And I'm doing this intentionally because I want to show you this on the reporting when we get towards the end of this. Now, um, description and reason for contract to improve our quality of life. There you go. All right. Scheduled disclosures. We may or may not know what that is. Some of us, but to the contract world, the disclosure is something that has to be in place before we can do business together. And in this particular case, we're going to request proof of insurance from our vendor. And it's a disclosure. So we're going to say, hey, where this contract is starting on Monday the 31st, and I'm going to need to see that by no later than Thursday the 27th. I'm also going to put in there that the uh, vendor needs to have uh, two mil in professional liability insurance. Okay. Now, who's the vendor? Well, Complete Paperless Solutions, C-O-M-P-L. There it is. Again, taking away the misspellings by giving a list. Again, by selecting auto-populating from a third-party system. This is important because this vendor or customer area is not only metadata, but it's a collection of metadata that allows us to tie together purchase orders and requisitions and, and, and invoices and check runs and contracts and insurance. So this is, again, a best practices point that how we use this metadata and how we control, in this case, the metadata is to our advantage in the global picture of multiple business processes, or um, I think it's uh, Kimberly calls it case management or something along those lines, a, a larger level of, of, of interaction. So I just wanted to point that out. And now this entity type, Tom is definitely a professional. Now, we've got our address here that's automatically popped in, but let me show you this. Let me get rid of that address. Because one of the other things that I'm doing here is I'm tying in this form with a master address table. So say, for example, if I start typing in, um, I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, uh, Oak Street, Southwest Ridge, Oak Street, that's the one I'm looking for, San Francisco. So now this one pulled up a list, but this one pulled up a master address list from Google, which we were able to incorporate right into this form. And again, we're eliminating mistakes. We're eliminating misfiling. Okay? Signature. Now we're down to the bottom. Remember when I had to authenticate with my username and password at the top, it grabbed it automatically and the date. Now, my signature down here while I'm on the PC is mandatory. And while it's typing in one of those types of signatures, when I submit it, it's still considered an electronic signature because I had to authenticate and it was required for me to sign it before I could submit it. Now, if you're on a mobile device, LaserFish has uh, a mobile device as well, app, which has forms and LaserFish built into the mobile app. You can access it from your phone or your tablet. With that, you can actually use your finger, or if it comes with a stylus, you can actually sign it on the pad using those devices. My PC, a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and submit this, okay? Now, let me reiterate. This is a request for a contract. 
It is not a contract. Now, in this world, it, and it doesn't really matter whether you're a big in- agency or a small agency, there is still a team of people that handle the contracts, or there might be might just be one person that handles the contracts. It's hard to say. But in our world, in Laserfish, we have the ability to manage teams of people that use the forms application. Now, let me go ahead and pull this up. Um, our submission is complete. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, let me let it load here real quick. All right, and I'm going to our inbox. And since I am, let's just say, for example, I'm uh, I'm I'm the deputy city clerk, and I'm in charge of assigning or delegating who needs to work on who needs to manage these contracts. Because this is another key point: is that you know we need to load balance this. I mean, when we have technology in place, sometimes you see these bottlenecks where, well, they're the ones that have the scanner, or they're the ones that have the interface, so I'm going to put it on them. One of our best practices is to spread the wealth. Um, and create teams and you delegate authority. In this particular instance, we've got this new contract that came in uh, for contract management implementation, right? And it's a high priority. Remember, we checked that. But see, it's not for me to process this draft. It's for me as the team leader or the uh, uh, the uh, contract management leader to assign this to somebody in the administration team. You'll notice it picked up that in our form automatically. And it gives me a list of those team members that are in administration. Now, for speed today, because I'm long-winded anyway, I'm going to just head and go ahead and choose myself so that we don't have to log in and log out as the different individual users and wait for this process to load. I am running a little bit sluggish today uh, because we have had some brownouts and I'm working off of a, 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 a mobile phone internet today. So it's a little bit sluggish, but not too bad. Now, so we assigned this task, right? So now we're going to go out a team task. And, you know, this person that it was assigned to just got an email. And their email says, hey, you got uh, an initial draft that you need to take care of for, um, you know, the complete paperless solution. So they click on that. It takes them into this form. It takes them into this submission. Now, this is the person that's going to build out the contract. Okay. Now, why are we doing this? Well, let's talk about this for just a quick second. What we're doing with this contract management system here is we're plucking the low-hanging fruit. Okay, There's a lot of agreements like general services agreements, uh, non-disclosure agreements, um, uh, statement of work, you know, whatever the case might be. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit that our legal team or you know, attorney doesn't need to be involved in. And these are recurring contracts that we can take away that pain and, and actually streamline it. So that's what we're trying to do here today. But we are still involving that legal team because they gave us a library of clauses to insert into our contracts. And me as the administrator, I know what the procedures are. I've got it written down right here in front of me. And I know how we do business, right? I've been trained. I know we need a force majeure. That pulls in from my library that my lawyer gave me. I know we need the right to audit. I know we want a conflict of interest and compliance of laws. Um, exclusions. Um, I'm just going to put hardware is not included just to have something in there. I'm going to leave additional services out, but I'm going to put some workers in here. I want to put, um, I'm going to put Tom in. And he's the boss. And I'm going to add one more person. Um, oh, Smiley P. Whiplash. I think I'll add, add him. He's the engineer. All right. Um, I have no comments. I don't have to type that in. I just like to talk and type, apparently. And I'm going to hit next. Now, let's talk about this. This is a technology thing, right? So... I might want to include IT technology in the approval of this draft to become a contract. Oh, you can't get a contract for that because we don't have the server. Okay. Canceled. Accounts payable. Oh, we don't have the money for that. Not to mention, if you did have the money for that, it has to go through council, and we have to have it approved. Can't do that. 
employee contract. That's self-explanatory. I'm not going to select any of these right now because I'm not going to add the extra step. You guys are smart. You get the, the gist of it that we have a collaboration and approval process built into forms. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and generate that contract because I'm on a schedule here and I'm running just a second behind. So we've gone and we've submitted that into the system. And I got another email from the system that said, hey, there is now a draft that has been generated by the administrator that needs to be finalized. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's finalize that draft. And we're getting close to the end here, guys. So just give me a second. And we've had a little bit of slowdown because of my internet and I do apologize. I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in here again. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is two pieces of Laserfish technology. Okay. The first one being Laserfish Forms. And within Laserfish Forms, you notice on the right hand side here, the whole time we have this thing called action history. And this tells me where the contract is and what's going on, or excuse me, where the submission for that contract is throughout the process and who has it and what's going on. And then I also can just have a quick summary of the whole thing. Now, in the main body of the window, you'll notice that it's loaded our contract. I can go ahead and view this in full screen, and I like to do this, especially on my 32-inch monitor because my eyes seem to be going. But you notice as we go through this that it's built up, 1234 Oak Street, San Francisco. It's filled out all this. I put my force majeure in, my right to audit, my conflict of interest, my exclusions. I might need to go in and fix something. I'm not going to do that to save time, but I could go in and fix this right now by simply coming in here and saying edit with Microsoft Word. And it will open in Word. I can make the edit and move on. Okay. It does everything I asked it to do right down to including the signature, the address, and everything that's pertinent for this particular general services agreement. Now, this contract has been generated okay now it's no longer a draft now since we didn't send this to IT or we didn't send it to human resources or to purchasing this contract now just simply needs to be signed so what has happened is the system automatically sent an email to the potential vendor, Tom Zencina. So Tom right now should have received an email because I received a copy of it. So Tom got sent this email with a copy of our contract. Let me preview that for you. Now this has been converted from the Word document to a PDF, and now it's ready for him to sign. Now we do have multiple options for signature at this point, and I'm not gonna mention them at this point, but we can talk about them later. But now Tom needs to send that contract back. And once I get it back, I can now save that attachment. To my system. And like I said, we do have different ways of doing the signatures. Um, you might have caught one as I scroll through my folders. But now we have this task in here to sign this contract. Okay. Now. Since I was the submitter, the obligation to receive the signed contract in our world is the responsibility of the submitter. Again, we want to load balance this. I don't want the clerk's office to go out and get these signatures. So this person got an email back and said, hey, you got the contract. And you can set it up however you want to. But this is in, in my world. And get that general services agreement that's signed and attach it to the system, right? So here it is. Here's the signed contract. Added to it, you notice that up at the top, our form has changed to contract signing. I'd also like to point out that within this form, um, all of our information, all of our pertinence, and everything that is there related to this is all in the form, and I just need to submit it. Okay. Now, on the back end, and I didn't show this, but on the back end, guess what's been going on? In our quality assurance area, inside of the Laserfish application, inside of our contract approval process folder, there's a contracts folder. And inside of there, it created this complete paperless solutions folder. You'll notice that it has the status of all the contracts that are in my system and where they're at. Well, see, this one was sent to vendor for signature, right? And also, you notice 
that the Word document that was here before is no longer there. It was a Word document, but I didn't show it to you in this interface, but I showed it to you in Web Access. Now, what's the last thing to do? Well, this contract has to be signed by the appropriate approving official within your organization. And so we're going to go ahead and sign this. Again, one of these little buttons, and I'm going to sign it. Gregory Heim, I got a signing certificate, and boom, it's signed. Now, me as the administrator, I come back to this, and I'm into this folder, and I see that it looks like it's signed. But I want to validate this signature and make sure that everything's okay. Signature valid. And also with this button, let me point out that I can go to the contracts folder overall and hit validate. And it'll show me every signature and where it's at and what's going on within the contracts folder. I've got uh, all signatures that are valid. I've got three, and I've got one with an invalid signature, right? And I've got four that are unsigned, which is really a nice feature. Um, and that's built into LaserFish again. It's just a matter of uh, configuration. Now, we should be able to select this contract now, and guess what we're going to do? We're going to execute the contract, right? And just like before, it's going to get moved. But, oh, what happened? Oh, we got a little bit of an issue going here. Something didn't get completed. So let's go ahead and find out what that is. You see here we have a dashboard, and this is a monitor for our contract management system. And it says that it's still kind of hanging out there. Well, let's go see what's going on. Down here at the bottom, it says it's assigned to Gregory Heim, and it needs to be signed. But man, I could have sworn we already did that, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. But it's nice having the dashboard because it tells me where everything is. And you know what? I must have grabbed the wrong contract because the process is not as it should be. So let me try that again. Because now, do you guys notice one thing about this that's different than the other one I did? That this one actually has the quote underneath it. So, oh boy, I never make mistakes. But guess who just made a mistake? Again, human error. Now it looks like it's right. Now let me submit that. Thank you, Laserfish. All right. Let's go back to this. Validate signatures. One that wasn't authorized. Now, let's see if that was our reason. We still have that one authorized signature, but when we go over here to our contract, you notice our status has now changed from pending that signature from the vendor to now pending the final approval. Let me execute it now. Now it's going to pop off the screen and everything's going to be hunky-dory, right? Wrong. What happened now? Well, remember our disclosures? Didn't we have to have a proof of insurance somewhere in there? Look what happened. It said it's missing the disclosure. I'm not going to execute this contract until I have that. But guess what, you guys? Remember at the onset of this, we scanned that in. It's in legal legislative. It's in proof of insurance. It's under complete paperless solutions. And guess what? I don't have to um, copy this document over there. What I can do, though, is just copy a shortcut, right? System knows the insurance is there. It can check it. Everything's good. Now let me go in and let me execute the contract. And like before, when the system said everything's okay, it does its refresh, and you know that everything's fine because it actually files the contract automatically. Now. I'm going to click on, that looks like it's going to take a quick second because of my speed. i got to get through this because we are running late. I'm going to click on this one last button that's called Agreements Report. Okay? We'll let that run through, and we'll see that on our report in just a second. Um, so after clicking the Agreements Report, everything that we have filed with our metadata, our contracts, and all that information that was gathered from the system has now been stored in LaserFish, and it's got a status assigned to it based on the 
the end date or the termination date of the contract. Okay. Um, every piece of insurance that's in there. And you saw how I indexed the accord. All the different coverages are in there. Okay. Now, most of these things are in here for a year. And as the system goes through and queries these, we have the ability to generate multiple reports. We can generate a 60 or 30 day report. We can generate a open ended report and we can generate an expired report. And those are the three reports that I have currently active. Now, I'm noticing right now that in my system, and I'm not sure if it's because it's sluggish, but we're having a little bit of an issue with my email. So let me see if I can get this thing to refresh here real, guy, real quick, you guys. And I'm sure that this is related to my email system. But you'll notice, here we go, that I just got the email in. Sorry for the delay. And it gave me my report. It attached it, number one, as a PDF, but you also notice in the body of this that it tells me that I have 11 items that are due within 30 or 60 days. It lists the vendor in the top left. It lists the contract, and it has a link to it to get to it. It says it's a public works contract, joint powers agreement. This one's expired. This one's due in 30. Now, down below it, we've got proof of insurance, expired, 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 expired for complete paperless solutions. And not only does it have that, but now we use that common thread of vendor, that metadata, remember that I talked about, and it said, hey, we've got a bunch of different contracts with other departments that are tied to this insurance that's expired right in our report, okay? Um, I'm gonna speed this up, I apologize. Um, and we're gonna do an open-ended contract, it shows me all of my open-ended. And then last but not least, it sends me an expired report. Okay, it hasn't sent me the expired report. Not yet. And I know the reason that it hasn't is because that report is a, little, a lot larger than the rest of them. But now, here's the thing. From this, I can click on any one of these entities, and it takes me straight into Web access. Now, we talked about Web Link earlier, which was the public facing portal, and that's a read only client. Web access is, again, Laserfish, but this client is read write. So it still allows us to participate in our business processes, right? And so here is that document that, is, that was expired that I clicked on from the report, and it pulls it up automatically for me. Now, um, I am really, really running late. I do apologize, you guys. I was going to show you um, audit trail reporting as my last thing. Um, most of you might know about audit trail, um, but with this button, we can select any document in LaserFish and actually run a report of every touch and every action straight from adding another one of these buttons. Now, this button might be another part of a future webinar, but we definitely are going to move into invoice capture and a business process about that in one of our future webinars. So look for that. At this point in time, I'm going to turn it back over to Kimberly um, because I have been a little bit long-winded as usual. And I want to thank you for your time and attention. I'd really like to thank you because I've been watching the attendance and you've all hung in there. I didn't lose any of you. And I'm really happy to see that. Thank you very much. Kimberly? Hey, Greg. Thanks. Um, so now we'll roll in to take some time to uh, answer some questions. And we've got um, some good questions. It's a good mix of um, extremely specific and very, very general. So we will start with, this is a question about forms. Can these forms be accessible from the public facing portal to citizen customers so that they can fill them out and submit them? Greg? Oh, 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 that was a question for me. Sorry. Yes. Um, I, I was thinking, wow, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a great question, first of all. But yes, Laserfish, not only does it have a public portal for public facing documents, but guess what? It's got a public portal 
for public facing forms. So the answer to your question is yes. Does it have a slightly different bit of licensing to it? Yes. Is this something you need to check with your, your value added reseller on to get pricing and set up? Yes. It's a pretty common thing that people do and, uh, it's uh, readily available to do things like, uh, you know, public records requests if somebody wants to submit one straight from your, your website or an employment application or things of that nature. Yeah, I just wanted to add forms is a really great product because it's a structured way to ask for information. So you can automatically push it into a database or another system. So it's super useful. Um, next question, Greg, this is going to be for you. You showed a drop down address picker with addresses from Google Maps. Could you limit the address suggestions to a specific city? Yes, absolutely. And in that particular case, I wouldn't use a global system. What I would use is a proprietary database lookup with just the addresses for a particular township, section, grid, city, county, or state. So yes, we can filter those, but we would filter those on our lookup table specifically and directly. And I'd also like to add that that lookup table, even if you're not a technical person, we also have the ability and a, and a procedure that we do here at Complete Paperless Solutions that we can give our clerks and people that need to manipulate SQL data tables that are local or even some that are in the cloud, we can give them the access to be able to, to actually modify your list, your databases, whether it be an address table or whether it be a retention schedule. Okay, next question. Um, this is about signing. Is the sign and validate an out-of-box feature or an add-on? Greg, that's for you. Well, in, within LaserFish, what I showed where I did the sign and validate, that is built into LaserFish. Um, but what you do need to get that does not come with it is a signing certificate. Now, keep in mind that these signing certificates have to be purchased. But a machine, I believe, and, and I can get back to you on this, most machines have a certificate for a valid machine. And sometimes we can use that certificate from the machine to automatically use it and tie it to our signature, since it's our machine. Um, but if you don't have that, then we just get with our IT staff to purchase uh, simple certificates for signing to add to the built-in feature of signing and validating within LaserFish. Okay, uh, now we have a more general question. I'm new to workflow. If I were to build out a process, what do you suggest? Greg or Tom? Well, if you're new to workflow, you know, my philosophy with LaserFish and the reason I like LaserFish so much is because simple. It's simple. Simple sells. When it comes to workflow, um, can get complicated. So we want to start simple. So what I would do is I pick, you know, low hanging fruit. You heard me mention that earlier. Something simple like, um, uh, you know, just a filing process. Hey, I'm going to change these attributes and I want the system to file it for me automatically. Now, something like that is very simple because inside of here in LaserFish workflow, I can create a new workflow and just simply come over here and say, what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to assign some field values and I want to route it to a folder. And I also, and I'm not getting it on the list, so I'm going to search for this tool. I'm going to say assign. Uh, sorry, I did the backwards, uh, retrieve, right, field values. So this is a really simple workflow that says, go ahead and retrieve the field values or that metadata we talked about for that document on the front end. And once you retrieve that value that that person went in, you know, you might assign a different value, you might change something, but then let's take those metadata values and let's use it to route them right, to a specific folder. Or if you want to just make it really simple, you can just select the folder you want it to route to. Now, this is a very simple put in some metadata and watch it move. But see, once you start with that, if you do the baby steps, then you are running before you know it because you get so wrapped up in it. You're like, oh, what does this do? And what does that do? So start with something simple. But let me tell you this, start in a sample folder. Do not ever 
work with production data. Start small and let it grow. And if you have any questions, give us a call. Okay, uh, here's another question. I've identified a process in my department that I'd like to automate. How can I be sure I picked the right one? Greg? Well, you spent the time already um, to investigate, to find it. Um, you know, in this particular case, if, you know, if it's not a democracy, then trust your gut. You made the right choice. And here's the nice thing, you know, about LaserFish and LaserFish workflow that I should add. Everything in LaserFish is controlled by an SQL table. So everything in LaserFish is cosmetic. What does that mean? Well, cosmetics. Think about that. If you put makeup on, you're, you're making it look pretty. Er. Um, you know, it's cosmetic. It's paint on the wall, maybe. I mean, it's something cosmetic. It can be changed with a couple of clicks. So don't be scared, especially, you know, um, if, it, if you did pick the wrong one. You know, because, you know, the time and effort is never going to be wasted because you picked it in the first place. And we have had it happen where somebody said, hey, that's great, but we've got an even more pressing matter that we should start with. And that's your consideration. But nine times out of ten, you put the work in, trust your gut, and listen to your pain. You'll know. I also want to add as a resource, check out cps247.com and go to the blog. We've been writing about workflow this entire month because August is workflow month. And uh, there is a specific blog post where Tom Z and Cena talks about questions to ask yourself about picking what workflow to what, what should you automate? How do you work with people? How do you get buy-in from you know the executive staff? So please check that out as a resource. I think we have time for one final question. I haven't had any exposure to workflow, but I really want to learn. What's your best suggestion for getting started? Well, um, the first thing that you're going to need to do, and it depends on what your position is, and of course, um, you know, gaining access to the utilities. Um, LaserFish has separate user interfaces for that. So the first thing you need to do is, you know, get with your IT staff to say, hey, I need to gain further access or I need an additional designer put in. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the workflow designer. And this designer gives us the ability to drag and drop tools and all these things in and build these workflows out. However, not everybody gets this utility, number one. And number two, this utility is is uh, directly connected to the SQL server so that as we update these workflows, it updates them on the SQL. So there's special permissions that you have to go through, a couple of hoops. But once you get that set up, and of course we can help you get that set up, but once you get that set up, it's just a simple matter of, you know, again, trial and error. The one thing that's really nice about LaserFish is their electronic help files are very up to date, not to mention they have one that's an online that you can go out to and get even more current. Uh, information. And every object, every tool that's in the system here has a help button on it. It has something to help you get through what this particular tool or object can do for you. Um, so, you know, just get started. Um, you know, uh, don't be scared of it because honestly, um, nine out of 10 people that jump in, they're scared at the onset, but after they're in, they're like, wow, you know, this isn't as as hard as I thought it would be. But again, as we've reiterated throughout this whole thing, there are best practices and there are certain things that you need to, you know, uh, to avoid. And so you still want to make sure that, you know, you contact us before um, you, you start into anything into production. We always want to do checks and balances and we always want to help with whatever you're doing. So. And I just want to add to that, if you are a CPS VIP support a uh, plan owner, free training. So, you know, call us and we'll train you. And with that being said, I'm going to end the webinar. Thank you, Tom and Greg, and thank you to our audience. We appreciate you being here. And just one final reminder that we have recorded this webinar and we'll be posting it on our website, cps247.com. Uh, we plan to have it up by end of day on Friday. Thanks again for making time to join us today, and uh, we'll see you on the next webinar.